Hey everyone, Matto back here, and it's time for This Week in Destiny, where we give you all the details on everything coming up inside of Destiny 2 as we approach the weekly reset for August 10th, 2021. From special events to raid challenges to everything in store for the Eververse, here's everything you need to know to have a great week inside of Destiny. If you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a comment down below to help out the channel as the YouTube algorithm is a fickle beast. And make sure to get subscribed, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any Destiny 2 news. So with that, let's get hunting, Guardians. This week is pretty special because we are finally going to see the epilogue of the Season of the Splicer storyline. We're going to see what happens with Mithrax, the last city, all of the stuff going on with Lakshmi, the future war cult, as well as Osiris. Everything that's been going on with the override missions, the expunge and corrupted expunge missions, everything that happened with the Endless Night has been leading to this moment. There is going to be a mission that you are going to do. There has been some data mined material on this, but I don't like to provide spoilers for people. But if you are interested in watching along with us live on YouTube, I'll be doing a YouTube stream tomorrow at Reset. So you'll want to make sure you stay around for that. So make sure you stop on in and come experience the story of this season as we wrap up Season of the Splicer. Moving right along, we have the progression of the Vault of Glass challenges. This week, we've got the Gatekeeper challenge. The Gatekeeper challenge is pretty easy to explain. In the Gatekeeper encounter, there are two gates, one to the left, one to the right. Most of the community calls the gate on the left-hand side the Mars Gate, and the one on the right-hand side the Venus Gate. What you need to do is a team, you need to go into the portals and defeat the Wyverns and the Minotaurs as they spawn up before they can run into the Confluxes in those gates. The challenge is that you have to kill the Wyvern in one gate and the Minotaur in the other gate, within five seconds of each other. The real challenge is the fact that the Minotaur uses a shield that can only be broken by the Relic. An easy way to deal with this is to make sure that you have tons of Stasis Warlocks, and when you're going in, you need to use your Stasis Turrets as much as possible to freeze all the different enemies together and keep them from moving. That way you can time things out and you can communicate with your teammates when you need to destroy it. The additional challenge on Master is the addition of many barrier and overload champions, so you need to make sure that you spec for that. Especially on the final phase, where there is a central conflux in the glass throne area, you're going to have a lot of barrier champions that you're going to have to take out. So I recommend starting with Anarchy when you're doing the first initial phase, and on the final phase, if you can switch to Lament so you have a way to slice through all of those shields. It will make things a lot easier as long as things are frozen. Again, Stasis Warlocks, Lament, and Anarchy are really strong for this. By completing this on the Master difficulty, you'll earn a time-lost weapon as well as a chance to earn high stat armor. The time-lost weapons are the Adept versions of the Vault of Glass weapons, which are able to equip the special Adept mods. This week's Time Lost Weapon is the Hezen's Vengeance Rocket Launcher. With next season bringing the Anarchy nerf that we've talked about a little bit on the channel and in the stream, the Heavy Slot is now open to some different combinations of weapons that might be really strong, and Hezen's Vengeance would be one you definitely want to get your hand on. Like all of the Time Lost weapons, they come with a curated roll as well as a set of random rolls. The curated roll is going to give you Volatile Launch, Black Powder, Overflow, and Cluster Bomb. If I was going to be looking for a specific random roll set in the top slot, I would be looking for Hard Launch or Quick Launch with Impact Casing. Impact Casing is really important because it increases damage on direct hits. If you don't get Impact Casing, the next best one is going to be High Velocity Rounds. In the third slot, the really only good choices that I see are Impulse Amplifier, which will massively increase projectile velocity and increases reload speed, or Auto Loading Holster. Auto Loading Holster is really good because you can reload it after you stow it, which is really nice. You don't actually have to go through the animation of reloading your weapon. But I think the one that you really want is Vorpal Weapon. That's going to increase your damage against bosses, vehicles, and guardians with their super active. It's going to be very, very strong, especially as Anarchy is going to get nerfed. Another good role would be the Lasting Impression, where rockets attach on impact and detonate after a delay, but most importantly, it increases their blast radius and damage. 
with a 20% straight boost to damage, it's going to be very strong if you can wait for the detonation to happen. Moving on, the high stat armor earned from the master difficulty of Vaults of Glass will focus on a specific stat distribution, rotating weekly. So for example, it might give you a higher stat distribution in intellect, discipline, or strength. If you've been on the hunt for a certain armor piece with a high stat distribution, master difficulty will give you greater chances for the distribution you're looking for. This last week, there was a change to the Vaults of Glass loot pool. So what they did is they removed weapon drops from the master version of Vault of Glass encounter loot pools. Players are guaranteed to receive stat focused armor from the master difficult encounters. This means that master Vault of Glass loot lockouts have been separated from normal. Both can now be looted independently each week. However, drops will only be at pinnacle power for the first weekly clear of each encounter. Of course, if you complete the challenge, you get the time lost weapon only on the master version. Take note that while the master difficulty of the Vault of Glass doesn't have a minimum power requirement, all enemies are going to be at 1350 power. So if you can raise your artifact level, that will be the best way to engage with the raid as well as boosting your character's overall base power level. The Master Vault of Glass also gives you the final triumphs required for the Fate Breaker raid seal and title. You can also earn the Vault of Glass ship, the Vault Strider, when you complete the Vault of Glass on the Master difficulty. Next up, we've got the Grand Master Nightfalls for this week, and that's what I said, Grand Masters. All of the Grand Masters will be unlocked this week, so if you are missing one for the Conqueror title, you can go ahead, knock it out, and get that completed for your title and seal. If you are doing any Nightfall on the Master version or below, it's going to be the Insight Terminus Nightfall. You can select that from the main Nightfall node. Completion of the Grand Master Nightfall will drop Ascendant Shards, Enhancement Cores, as well as the highly coveted Nightfall exclusive weapons in their Adept versions. This week, we're going to see the Hung Jury SR4 show up as the Adept weapon for this week. The god roll that most people are looking for is the rapid hit trade in the third slot as well as explosive payload. But there are some other roles that you might want to be looking for. For example, in the third slot, subsistence is nice because when you defeat a target, it will reload some of your magazine. Moving target is very strong inside of PvP in the third slot. And in the fourth slot, it can roll with Firefly, making it the only weapon outside of the Vault of Glass that can roll with that. In addition, Box Breathing is very strong inside of PvP. The lower tier of Nightfalls, like Master, Legend, and below that, you can farm for the weapons and the loot, but any weapons earned outside of the Grand Masters will not drop as the Adept versions. They will drop as the normal versions of the weapons. Now that we've wrapped up all the refresh of the weekly items, we're moving on to the Vanguard Strike playlist. The weekly Singe should be moving to Arc, so make sure you have your Arc weapons and subclasses loaded and ready to go. The daily modifiers do change, so make sure you check them out before getting your loadout together. If you own Beyond Light, you'll also be able to use Stasis as well for the Vanguard playlist to earn your pinnacles. At Reset, we'll also see the rotation of the Enhanced Lost Sectors. On the easier Legendary version, we have the Perdition Lost Sector on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets. And then the harder version, the Master version, is going to be found in Bunker E15 for Exotic Leg Pieces. The new exotics from each of the new seasons only drop from doing these Lost Sectors solo. So if you don't have them, now's a good time to farm for them so they have them in your inventory. Remember that the Lost Sectors do rotate on a daily basis. If you're looking for a quick update on what those are, if you're on Twitter, there's a fantastic Twitter account named the Lost Sector Bot that will actually tell you what the Lost Sectors are, or you can check out todayindestiny.com. For those people who own Beyond Light, we're moving over to Europa to check out the Eclipsed Zone for this week, which is going to be found over in the Cadmus Ridge. So if you're missing any of the augments, head over there and knock those out. The weekly Empire Hunt is going to rotate to the Technocrat. Remember that if you complete this on the Master difficulty, you can still earn a piece of Pinnacle gear currently. The Empire Hunt is also the place to hunt for the Cloud Strike Sniper Rifle, so if you don't have it, and you want to farm for it, all you have to do is complete it on the normal difficulty. The only reason to complete it on the master difficulty is to earn a pinnacle. This week, we also have a new Exo Challenge, which is rotating to the Simulation Safeguard mission. Both the Empire Hunt and the Exo Simulation can be completed solo or with a fire team. 
This week's Ascendant Challenge is the Keep of Honed Edges, which can be found over in Harbinger's Seclude. To complete the Ascendant Challenge, make sure you pick up the bounty from Petrovenge and then head way far north in the Dreaming City all the way to the end where you'll see a large statue. Make sure you pop a tincture of Queen's Foil and hop into the Ascendant Challenge. I will have a guide down below that will give you all the things you need to do to complete it since this is one of the more challenging Ascendant Challenges. I also have a full guide on how to get the eggs in this Ascendant Challenge if you are looking to get that completed. With the Dreaming City weapons being brought back, now is a good time to hop back in and get those Ascendant Challenges done each week. Because we are far enough through the season, all of the seasonal challenges are available. This is a great time to go after any of the challenges that you need to complete for Bright Dust that might help you buy some of the cosmetics that you're missing from the Eververse. On that note, let's go check out what the Eververse is going to have at the reset of August 3rd. As always, I'm only going to cover things that are available for Bright Dust as you can purchase things for silver at any time. To start off with, we're going to go with the emotes. We've got the Threatening Stance Exotic Emote, the No Signal Legendary Emote. For Ghosts, we have the AOKI Fast Shell, as well as the Cosmos Shell. We have two exotic ships for sale today. We have the VG-17 Flying Fortress, as well as the Cosmos Light Beam Ship. For the exotic ornament for weapons, we have the Conscripted Ornament for Travelers Chosen. For those folks looking to get some of the seasonal legendary ornaments, this week we're going to see the helmets drop for Bright Dust. That's going to include all the helmet ornaments. That's the Courtier Mask, the Courtier Helm, and the Courtier Cover. For the Transmat effect, we have the Catch Flight Entrance, as well as a Ghost Projection featuring Atheon. Finally, this week is one of my must-have shaders. This is Jacarina, and it's an excellent shader that offers a lot of great variety, a lot of great color schemes. Also, it offers a little bit of a black shading that is pretty unique to Destiny 2. So this is a must-have shader. All right, everyone, that is everything for this week. A great overview of everything that we can expect at the weekly reset in Destiny 2. If you've enjoyed the video or have found it useful, be sure to check out the rest of the videos in the cards. And as for other future Destiny content and staying up to date, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single thing. In addition, I'm live nearly every day on twitch.tv slash manodestra, where our community and I help guardians with raids, exotic quests, Grandmaster Nightfalls, and more. So if you want to join a fantastic community, we invite you to come check it out. The link for our growing community Discord is down in the description box below, and we encourage you to join us there for all the off-stream shenanigans and news as well. I'll see you all later for our Grandmaster Guide. Good hunting, Guardians. I will see you next time in the universe of Destiny.